Fallout 4 offers up a post-apocalyptic playground filled with all sorts of wild encounters and ways for the player to achieve their goals. But as far as a complete package, unless you play with Frost mods installed, it can feel somewhat silly at times. Last time I ventured away from the Commonwealth, I visited Russia and traveled the metros with Artyom, offering up a very atmospheric story with a unique take on the genre. And now on the other side of the pond, I'm visiting Ukraine to do the same with Stalker. A game of amnesia, spooky things that go bump in the night, and the feeling of always being one bullet away from death. This is Stalker Shadow of Chernobyl. Unlike with Fallout, where I start by making my character, instead I'm thrown into a death truck and then struck by lightning, only to then have my body stolen. I'm brought in for an insurance claim, but when it's found out that I couldn't afford my premium in this type of economy, I'm instead a tasked with working off the debt. Welcome to Stalker. After getting a rundown from Skamovich here about how to use hyper-advanced technology for the time this game came out, the main goal of the game is introduced in trying to find and kill a Strelok, whatever that is. Mr. Ripoff Merchant informs me that if I'm gonna want details on how to find this guy, I was gonna have to go and recover a flash drive from a homie named Nimble. But to find Nimble's location, I'm gonna need to go work with another stalker group. Like the ones conveniently placed right outside this shop. Fancy that! Between the leader Wolf and Skamovich, this is where you'll pick up the bulk of early game side quests. But for me, I was more interested in finding this Strelok guy. Wolf said he could help me, but like with the previous transaction waiting to be cashed in, first I had to go to a car park taken over by bandits to rescue Nimble and help out Wolf's men take back the area in the process. Since this is the first quest, I figured this would be a breeze, a way to test out combat, you know, dip my toes in. Fallout 3 and Fallout 4 have you start by killing rad roaches, how hard could this be? Well. For starters, on the way over I found an anomaly, and upon trying to investigate got my insides ripped apart by the very air I was breathing. Stalker is so hardcore even the air can kill you. I'm going to love it here. Shortly after I met with Wolf's men and began the assault on the bandits. But combat is something else entirely in this game. Not any different from any other first person shooter, but mainly in the sense that just because I'm aiming in one direction does not mean my bullets are actually going to go that way. Once you get used to the whack ass aim this game has, it's not so bad. Take my first encounter for example. And now look at how I did in the second playthrough. It just takes some getting used to, and a lot of shotgun shells. With the bandits dealt with, I was able to meet up with Nimble who gave me the flash drive I was looking for, as well as some artifact locations. Artifacts are items that give your stalker enhanced skills like reduced radiation or better endurance to run forever. But be wary as some of these can make you easier to kill, like ones that increase how much damage you take while bleeding, or just lower your bullet resistance. It's a good idea to try and use a variety of some, and we'll see that later in the video. With the flash drive in tow, I went back and paid off my insurance claim, but like with any kind of payment scheme, I already had more interest than the initial payment, so I would have to keep doing jobs to pay it off. Even in video games, the house always wins. Skamovich said that Strelok had found a passage leading deep into the zone and the traders wanted that route so they could set up shops so they could continue to loan shark desperate stalkers. But according to reports, something was stopping the traders from pushing forward. Something was causing people's brains to boil. There was a research institute believed to be the source of this phenomenon, and whatever research they had come across was set up nicely in a briefcase just left unguarded for someone to come in and steal. How he knew this, I have no idea. But once we get to the end of this game, maybe it'll all make sense. In my first playthrough, this is where I took a ton of side quests and ventured out into the zone, especially since the prices for this guy were higher than any inflation I've ever seen. But most of these side quests offer up new gear or ways to see the area around you, but I accidentally just followed the main quest and had to pass through this spooky electric tunnel. The same tunnel that was blocking traders from passing through to the north. Now. 
I may not be the brightest person when it comes to video games, or puzzles for that matter, but even I figured this out on my first try. The traders really need to step up their game. Apparently, making it through the tunnel was enough to satisfy the merchants, as I got called on my day off to tell me to come in and cover for someone else's shift. And since I really needed that promotion to afford these prices, I accepted the job. A stalker named Fox may have had some info on where to find Strelok, but since he was wounded from a recent raid, I would need to find him fast. I walked into a nearby farmhouse before making my way to Fox and took out some mutated cows, or whatever these things are. But since I got banged up in the process, I used a med kit. Normally I would just skip over this as it doesn't actually mean anything. Those cows don't, the med kit doesn't. But since Fox was literally mere steps away, I talked to him only to find out that he also needed a med kit. And you want to know how many I had? None! All because I decided to fight some cows. So, now that I was infoless and med kit less, I decided to go check out the nearby military blockade to see if they had any supplies I could borrow. But for some reason, my brain immediately went to asking them to empty their pockets as I threw a grenade at them. If my first encounter with guns was anything to go off of, I absolutely got smacked for this one. But after 30 minutes of trial and error, and a lot, lot of luck, I did make it out alive and with a new gun. It may not be the most optimal, but it'll do the job. These military guys are chumps, but at least I got my med kit. Except, oh boy, except this med kit would have been better used to buy a lottery ticket as the info I needed from the stalker was to go talk to his brother because he didn't actually know anything. And then this dummy got mauled to death by dogs. My guy, what kind of useless transaction was that? I got nothing and I had to give everything? Out of pure confusion, I went on a tour of side quests before heading out to progress the game. Between picking up someone's dry cleaning, destroying the local population of piggies, and taking out rival merchants. With the side quest completed, I headed back to town to turn them in. But as I did, I heard shooting upstairs. I figured some bandits or rival stalkers rolled up to spin the block because nothing stays still in this game. So I went to go check it out. And color me surprised when I saw that the army had sent the death squad to get their gun back. Everyone at the camp was dying. Bodies were everywhere and I was down and up more times than I could count. I know I had pissed them off, but this almost seemed like they were sending the entire military after this small group of stalkers that honestly had just been in the wrong place at the wrong time. It took a hot minute, and the camp had nearly three times as many bodies as it once did when everyone was alive, but before the second wave of military goons attempted to storm in, I headed out to get that info on Strelok's location because I ain't got time or ammo to do this. When heading into new areas of a game, normally you're shown something that grabs your attention. So when I saw the local goon squad holding up a stalker for his new tennis shoes his mom had just bought him, I felt right at home. Now I may not have gotten those tennis shoes, but a suppressed pistol and some ammo will make up for the loss. With my new gear, I got called on my PDA to come help a group of stalkers ambush a roving band of bandits. And since this game seems like having friends is pretty useful, I decided to go help them out, but only because they called me first. I'm not a mercenary, but a murder hobo with a first call first serve mentality. However, that group of bandits we were ambushing absolutely messed us up. For starters, it was like three bandits to every one stalker. And on top of that, my allies had the lifespan of my bank account after seeing the Fallout Magic the Gathering Commander set. We were getting swarmed left and right, and the whole time I tried to do this somewhat tactically. But it turns out you just have to stop sucking at aiming and shoot the fucking bandits. Who would have thought? After the ambush, I spoke with the leader of the group who informed me that the research facility I was tasked with finding ages ago was actually in this region. I mean, that's what the quest marker says, but yeah, okay, NPC, I'll trust you this time. However, they did one thing right. As a reward for helping them survive that bandit ambush, you remember Fox, right? That stalker that stole my med kit and then immediately died? Well, these guys actually told me that there was a hangar nearby and his brother was also in the region. So if I went to that hangar, maybe I'd be able to knock out two birds with one stone. Getting closer to Fox's brother, I got the beautiful words, task failed. 
It turns out these guys also couldn't survive the slightest gust of wind, and so I was called in to die over and over to distract the baddies long enough to get them out alive. And you want to know what amazing info this guy had? Just, just take a guess. I was now told that I now needed to go talk to another stalker named Mole who was investigating a supposed hideout that Strelok had used nearby. But as good as that info was, my gameplay loop up to this point had been go talk to guy A, who directs you to guy B, who tells you to go talk to guy A's wife, who sends you to guy C's cousin, who knows of guy D, but only guy E will tell you the info that guy G knows if you oil up guy Q. I figured I was heading in the right direction as not only were there tons of bullets going off, but a small cutscene played. Turns out that the stalkers the mole was part of was actually being vibe checked by the military I'd antagonized earlier, and now I had to go in and rescue them. Except this played out completely differently to how I expected it. In my first playthrough I hung back for a bit, and I guess everyone must have died of waiting because I literally just walked to mole and away we went without me having to do anything. Meanwhile my second playthrough... I was taking the fight straight to him! With Mole in tow, he walked me over to a sewer entrance and away I went. Somewhere down here would be the hideout I was looking for. Hopefully. Al allegedly, that's what the quest worker says. I had to show some bandits how we got down in the metro, but much like the metro, things were about to get freaky. Yep, that's right, now we have invisible tentacle monsters! Perfect. But after that, it was actually all smooth sailing as I just had to fight more military members. Except for the random inbred jackass that could rip my brain out through my nose, show me how my body was forcibly trying to shut down, and then top it off with an easy game as I died in a hallway still trying to figure out what the hell I was originally looking at! Eventually I found the hideout and even found a backup of Strelok's search history. This updated my quest to go find ghosts from Modern Warfare 2, but um, what about the research I was also here for? Well, it turns out it actually is right on top of this place. So now I'm out here handing out death dosages of bullets to everyone in the area, and grabbing a briefcase of special top secret can't look because the game doesn't give me an option to documents. And for some reason, the only person who could look through these documents was a barkeep further into the zone. I guess when it involves big brain intelligence, a drink is needed to keep your head straight. On my way over, I got distracted and dragged down a tunnel by the very air that we breathed because nature decided I had lived for far too long and being blown up was now in my fortune. Ah, uh, <laughs> good times. Continuing on, I made it to a checkpoint where some stalkers needed help clearing out some mutants, but even with killing some, I still got yelled at. I was still allowed to pass through and head to the bar, but why am I being yelled at? I saved you losers! After getting the briefcase to the barkeep, I got tasked with heading to a lab called X-18, because this was the time in history where everything was cooler with X in the name. Before I could just waltz into the lab, I needed to go borrow a key from a fellow stalker, in the same way that we gathered most of our goods up to this point, by killing everyone in the vicinity and trading bullets for the key. Oh wait, maybe that only works in Metro. Anyways, regardless, I now have the key and that means it's time for X-18. But unlike the bandits I had to kill in order to get here, this place would actually give me a run for my money. First of all, I had to find a passcode for a door. Pretty standard stuff. But what wasn't standard was the hallway that set itself on fire, mixed with Gollum thrown in just for funsies. At this point in time, my aiming and stalker was abysmal, so adding in anything that crawled, leaped, or slapped my cheeks was going to kill me 9 times out of 10, and that 10th time was usually just down to luck. Through brute force, I did manage to make it out of the hallway, only to get flashbacks from the Oceanside Hotel as random objects got hurled at my fragile- WHAT THE FUCK IS THAT?! Thankfully, it's not that scary. Making it further inside, I got attacked by some kind of fire ghost, but when I say attacked, I mean it kept calling in flame geysers as I tried to grab the documents I came in for, only to get trapped in the room? So what do you do when you're stuck in Stalker? That's right, you throw grenades! It worked so well for the military guys, why wouldn't it work here? And actually, surprise surprise, ghosts can actually die from explosions. I'm free! For a job well done, I took a little snooze and got to watch some random guy waste so much ammo on a seemingly endless amount of rats. 
My dreams never make any sense. Coming to, I attempted to make my way out of X-18 only to get blindsided by military members. I guess they're still pissed I escaped that stalker camp? So now here I am, checking every corner for enemies like the IRS checks for imbalances on your tax returns. My shooting still lacked discipline and I fired off more rounds than a... I've actually been told not to finish that joke. I eventually made it outside with more ammo to spare, only to then have to fight through buildings full of more military members. With the dust settled, I hightailed it back to Skamovich, only for him to immediately send me on my way all the way back to the barkeep. I swear, a homie could have just asked me to read him the documents over the radio. Making me run all the way back is just criminal. But by doing this, I did learn that I basically had infinite sprint due to artifacts, so I guess it isn't all bad? However, no matter how fast you run though, make sure you take time to spend it with your homies. I made it back to the barkeep only for him to go, yep, these are documents, all right. It turns out that the brain scorcher that wasn't being created but also wasn't at X18 had some components moved to another lab called X16. And now I was tasked with going and meeting up with a remote lab to find a way on how to get inside. On my way over, I seemed to get involved in a firefight between some mercs and some scientists. I figured taking out the mercs only made the most sense. And whereas they wasn't hard to do, the true test of this side quest was with its leader. I guess they never taught scientists how to actually walk. But instead of trying to help scientists more focused on getting down than instead of getting to safety, just come into this tunnel and hang out with Gordon Freeman instead. Might as well take his guns while you're here. He won't be using them again. All right, let's try to get to this mobile science lab again. Oh look, another tunnel that we have to, uh... Why are these homies on fire? Oh man, they have zombies in this game? Oh, that can't be good. After finding out the zombies in Stalker carry guns and love to soak up those precious bullets, I met up with the scientist and was told that X-16 had some special type of psionic force field that would fry my brain if I tried to go into it. So that just means I had to travel with this guy to go get some new drip in the form of a special hat. Except this was way easier said than done, as I not only had to show another scientist how to walk in a straight line and somehow not get stuck in a door, not outside the door, IN THE DOOR, but once outside this guy was determined to kill everything in the area regardless if it was in the way or not. And guess who was more fragile than my paycheck on Friday night when I found a pizza deal? This guy! We had to walk maybe, I don't know, five feet to the objective, and this man must have died 30 times, not to mention my deaths as I tried to save him, and my reward for helping him get the info to make my new hat? Another dream! But instead of pretty pictures, I just got some Russian man yelling at me, and this guy moaning on the floor. I gotta get these dreams checked out, man. After picking up the pieces of my brain, I returned to the lab and got told that one of the stalkers who ran with Strelok came here but got jumped by the zombies in the area. And honestly, I'm not surprised, those zombies pack quite a punch. I didn't think too much of this until I got told that he had the location of X-16 on its person. Next thing I knew, I was fighting zombies, only to loot the info and run straight into a compound so full of bad juju that even the sky turned into a sickly color. But don't focus on the sky when zombies are mad dumping! You'll catch every single bullet if you do not keep moving in this place! The other thing with zombies is don't spend a whole magazine per each enemy! I shouldn't have to tell you this, but I don't care how much ammo you have, this is silly and you'll be treated as such! Look at this! And then compare it to this! One bullet is all it takes if you just aim! Making it into the lab, I was told that my mission would be to turn off whatever machine was here, but oh boy was I underestimating this place. I came into a room with more zombie sentries and more of those damn jumpy golem guys. Even with a shotgun, I had trouble here, but not because of the zombies, just because of these Smeagol cosplayers, acting more like hunters from Left 4 Dead. I had to basically corner this thing to kill it, and this was only one. So imagine my disbelief when two got thrown at me at the same time! The mind assault guys take one grenade to take down, but these stupid jumpy bastards take an entire army surplus of ammo, enough bandages to cover the world, and a dream! A dream that you'll get lucky at hitting this thing before it rips your fucking face off! So I ran. 
Oh, I ran. I ran all the way into a room with a massive staircase. A countdown timer began, and now I had to shut off control modules while being blasted by zombies put in the silliest of places. Evil corporations, I'm talking directly to you. If you want guards, just reanimate the dead with the Necronomicon and give them opposable thumbs. If I try to break into your super evil secret base, you will have no issues, I promise you. However, you do run the risk of me somehow making it due to pure stubbornness and turning off your machine, which houses a giant brain? With this mission completed, I got rewarded with yet another dream. Except this is where it all kind of starts to piece itself together. If you listen really closely, you'll hear the name Strelok get used. And if you use ultra-secret FBI equipment, you'll see that these two people are exactly the same. So the mission of the game is for me to die? Haven't I already done that ages ago? Don't worry, a controller in the next room will make sure of that. Searching the room, I found the body of Ghost, another of Strelok's men, but it looks like the controller was too strong for him. I, I don't blame him, these guys suck. The info he had on him contained details of the missions of X-16, but since I'm not a snoop, I didn't read it for whatever reason. So now we had to head all the way back to the barkeep for more details on where to go next. However, this is where I should have read some more of my quests, and this is why the second playthrough is needed, but we'll come back to that later. So now that I was back at the barkeep, I decided to finally use some of that currency I had been amassing by buying the GP-37, a gun with decent accuracy, a scope, and tons of ammo for it. This would finally solve any bad aim I had, I was sure of it. I traveled to the next area only to get stopped by stalkers saying that this was a freedom territory. But before I even had a chance to ask what the hell that meant, they got ambushed and killed. I have no idea what just happened. And to follow that up, I immediately got conscripted by another group of stalkers who immediately had me fighting other stalkers. It's just one non-stop fight in this area, it seems. Except these new camo colored stalkers, they meant business. Not only did they take a fair amount of bullets to put down, but considering the fact that they were using the same type of gun I was meant I got tons of ammo and supplies, but it also means that I didn't need to buy the gun and could have saved all that money I spent just by looting it off these guys. Easy come, easy go, I guess. Checking in the group tag, these guys belong to something called Monolith, whatever that means. I also looted a second gun to test it out, mainly because somehow it was more accurate, and woo, let me tell you, this thing slaps! In burst, this thing was almost dead accurate. Finally, a gun that shot where I aimed. But whereas one thing was finally good for me, another thing had to go against. Like these pseudo dogs! Are they real? Are they ghosts? Why did the sky change color? But as if that wasn't bad enough, now I was fighting more monolith soldiers where ghosts flew overhead. But through the power of emptying small pointy things out of a long tube of explosion-powered machine, I made it into another doomsday science facility, and upon hopping a fence, the sky turned ghastly. More spirits flew around, the sound bugged out to where I couldn't even hear bullets anymore, but I pressed forward, straight into a game over. After another game over. My quest updated to turn off the Brain Scorcher yet again, which had me wondering if this was all in my head as I swear I had just done the exact same thing just the quest before. But the inside was completely different, so away I went. For the most part, there wasn't anything to report. Aw, oh, except the Predator from Wish! But I was beginning to notice that a lot of these rooms looked a little too big. Almost as if something would be in them, but not just yet. Further in, I took another nap, but this time I saw a cool rock and then got tons of cryptic flashbacks, only to awake and have someone tell me to come. come. Seems a bit forward, but sure, I'll heed your words. Except, remember those empty rooms? Oh yeah, they're filled with monolith goons now, and lots of them. As well as I thought I was doing, I was not prepared for people to be around every single corner, and even all that ammo I had disappeared faster than my head could spin. So much so that I was even using grenades to hopefully thin out rooms. But do as I try, I still managed to get stuck in the ceiling. Making it outside, I now had to fight through more military and monolith members alike. After jumping a fence, I got a phone call saying that with the Brain Scorcher deactivated, everyone and their mother was heading to the middle of the zone for artifacts. And if I wanted in on the action, I'd have to team up with another group of stalkers who would help me get through Pripyat to get there. But as I walked over, I found these stalkers enjoying a nice time as they were surrounding a campfire. Made from one of their own. 
Now arriving on the outskirts of Pripyat, I had the team of experienced stalkers lead me through some city blocks. But a night stroll was too much to ask for, and instead we had to fight monolith soldiers camping on the roof. Between my fantastic aim and millions of bandages, we got through without too much fuss. Pushing past Pripyat, however, was where things got wild. Anytime this game shows you a wide panning shot means you're gotta expect company. And that company was droves of monolith soldiers, the kinds that bring rocket launchers to fight. This area was hectic. Not only did I have explosions going off around me, but the sky was changing colors to mimic the carnage happening on the ground. Inside Ground Zero and chasing the wish-making monkey paw, I had to fight hordes of exosuit having monolith soldiers while some Russian guy yelled at me in my brain. These tight hallways were perfect for grenades, and combined with the absurd amount of anti-rad and bandages that I had, healing was always an option. That is if I didn't absolutely get wrecked first. Many, many, many deaths later, I climbed into the detonated shell of a reactor and got to play with some portals, enabling me to do some hardcore parkour and touch a magic monolith that definitely wouldn't do anything to me. I touched the stone and wished for the zone to disappear. And surprisingly, this actually worked. There were fields of green and sunshine. But what good is that when you lose your eyesight in the process? Welcome to one of the many false endings that this game has. Now, seeing as we accomplished some kind of goal but can't actually see it, it was time to backpedal. Plus, since I didn't actually complete the game, there was room for improvement. For starters, did you know that you can actually talk to the barkeep and have him give you details on Strelok? The goons he ran with, and even the freaking monolith? And the scientists out in the zombie fields will actually say that you need to find your colleague. Your colleague, Ghost. Is it possible he says this in all playthroughs? Yes, but did I see it? No. Now let's pick up at this turning point of where it all went wrong. Instead of just running forward blind and turning off everything turned on, I got tasked with meeting with the guide, who would direct me to a doctor the Strelok was seeing, and that meant I had to run all the way back to his hiding spot, which is fine because we had already cleared it out earlier during the main quest line. But finding it is another story. I spent ages aimlessly trying to remember where it was. I mean, how hard is it to find a hole in the ground? Oh, wait, there it is. I had to take out a couple of rogue bandits, but at least when I made it back to the hideout, it would all be smooth sailing, right? Right! This bomb that totally wasn't here last time went off. Anyway, meet the doctor. Now, in case it hasn't been made clear up to this point, you are Strelok. As the doctor here refers to you by name, he tells you that the monolith is just some kind of illusion and that no one has ever come back from it alive. And I get what he's saying, but two problems. If no one has come back from it alive, how does he even know about it? And two, I very much for real lost my eyesight. That was no illusion. But while I was trying to wrap my brain around the nonsense this main was saying, especially since the fact that he just kept talking even if he wasn't saying words, he told me of a decoder in an abandoned hotel room that I could use to get to the monolith controls and turn it off once and for all. Finally, we were going places. I met back up with the stalker group who would escort me through the outskirts once again, but snuck away to go find that decoder hidden in a local hotel, and honestly, I'm not surprised it was left here for me to collect. There's no way anyone would be caught dead staying here for too long. This hotel definitely gave off Ruin Your Reputation vibes. With the decoder in hand, I once again ran through Pripyat to make it inside the destroyed reactor, but decided to test out the Gauss rifle I passed up last time. And let me tell you, there's nothing more satisfying than one-tapping an exosuit-wearing monolith soldier. Too bad I don't have a ton of ammo for this thing. Pushing through the opposing forces, I got lost looking for a door to use my decoder on and learned that the monolith soldiers here are super susceptible to backshots. All you have to do is sneak up behind them and they don't even bother you. That is, unless you walk in front of them. After climbing a ladder, I got to use an exosuit, and while you do lose the ability to run, having that extra armor really helps. But... Only if you don't run straight into the enemy. This entire area boiled down to hallway fight after hallway fight, but with enough grenades and a lot of dying, I eventually made it to a room with a super evil looking hologram set up. And like with any problem in Stalker, if you don't understand something, you just shoot it until the quest updates. This triggered the hologram to break out, and out came the Wizard of Oz. 
He spilled the beans that the zone was a Terran reality, which is why so many weird things could occur, like a faction made out of zombies or hallucinations. And it continued carrying out experiments within the zone. Stalkers who were little more than glorified Indiana Jones impersonators were sent inside to retrieve artifacts. But by venturing too far into the zone or trying to find out the truth, the stalker's consciousness would become forfeit and they would basically turn into a sleeper agent for the government. That's what that truck at the beginning was. Strelok had ventured too deep and was too close to finding out the truth, so he was brainwashed and sent back to infiltrate the other stalker groups to keep info going to the government. And now, I was asked if I wanted to join the government and attempt to control the spread of the zone by giving up my subconsciousness or fight the power. You already know I had to do it to him. What came next was me getting thrust outside and now having to run a gauntlet of enemies while jumping between portals to maneuver the area. But even with supplies beginning to get tight, when you have the best gun in the game, there's not much anyone can do about it. But when one of the portals took me into Scamovich's office, I knew for certain he knew all of this. Turns out the reason the prices were so high wasn't because of inflation after all. It was because of the need to fund the government experiments. I continued reality jumping until I got to the final portal, taking me into the consciousness holding chamber, to which I emptied the remaining of my ammo destroying the holding cells. The next thing I knew, I was in the sun with my eyesight this time, as the zone seemingly was no more, and I could finally sleep without angry Russians yelling at me. Stalker does a great job of mixing in survival elements and strict gunfights and combining it with a believable post-apocalyptic world. Besides the aiming taking a bit to get used to, this is easily a recommendation for anyone who wants to take a break from Fallout. And with it being on sale and ported to consoles for the first time ever, now is the perfect time to get rid of your radiation through Vodka Enema. I want to give a massive shout out to the members on Patreon and to the channel members. You homies continue to fuel these wacky ideas and without your support and stream visits, it just wouldn't be the same. I can't thank you enough. With this being the first stalker game in the trilogy, if you want to see more of it, make sure to like and share the video. If this video does well enough, I'll take on Clear Skies next. And as always, I have been Chris from Crisis Gaming. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you on the next one.